So whether you've been taking photos for 20 years or 20 seconds, I think you're gonna be interested in the product I'm gonna show you today. Now I've used this software for a little while now, and even though I use products like Photoshop and Lightroom, I find really good use cases for this software. First of all, it's really quick and easy to learn. I didn't even look up any of the material before I used it the first time, I just opened it, started working with it. So the learning curve is very low, which is awesome, especially if you're a beginner. And secondly, this software makes my workflow much faster with a lot of common operations, which I really appreciate. And the software I'm referring to is Luminar Neo. If you haven't heard of Luminar Neo before, Luminar Neo is a photo editor that incorporates several AI functions into it. And the AI is really good. Luminar continues to add more and more features and the features are really quite incredible. In this video today, I'm gonna do an overview of the Luminar Neo software. And I'm gonna do some demos of some of the different features so that you can see what the software is all about. So let's dive in. So I'm gonna open up the Luminar Neo software here. And when you see it here, it's gonna to default to the catalog view. And there's gonna be some sample photos in here. These sample photos are great if you want to practice with them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some photos and I'm gonna show you how to do different things with those. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna click add image. And I've got some photos that I already put together in a folder here. So the first one we're gonna look at, let's check out HDR merge. So I'm gonna add these three photos here from Paris. And in case you don't know what HDR merge is, HDR merge is when you shoot several different photos with different EV levels. So in this case, I've got one photo here that's EV plus two, one photo that is EV zero, and then one photo that's EV negative two. Essentially, I'm shooting three different photos here with different exposures, and then I'm stacking those together to get the best possible image with the most dynamic range. So in order to do this function, once I've added these, I'm gonna select them and I'm gonna drag them over here to the right where it says HD merge. I'm gonna drop them right there and then I'm gonna click merge. And when I click merge here, it actually goes pretty quickly. And here's the resulting image from those three. So I really like how that looks, but I want to do a few more tweaks on it before I make it the final polished photo. So we're gonna go over here to edit and by the way, if you're using Luminar Neo for the first time, when you first open it, make sure to go up here to extras and make sure that you've installed those. So in this case, there are currently seven here. HDR Merge is one of them, and it's important to make sure they're installed. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go up here to crop and I'm gonna click Composition AI. And what Composition AI is gonna do is it's gonna pick the best composition for this photo based on some of those common composition rules for photography. So when I click it, it reframes it in that way right there. And I really like how that looks. It's got good balance to the photo. And so I'm gonna go with that recommendation. And then a couple other things I'm gonna do here is it looks like there could be a little bit of noise in this. So I'm gonna go here to noiseless and Luminar gives you advice on what type of adjustment to make. In this case, it says to use low. So I'm gonna click here on low. It's gonna do its magic. And yeah, right there, it definitely took away some noise. If you want to see the before and after, click and hold on the eyeball here. And that's gonna be the before and that's the after. So it's kind of subtle, but it does make a difference there. I really like how that looks. And other than noiseless, I just wanna go down here to develop and I want to add a little bit more saturation here. So I'm gonna go down to color and I'm gonna add just a bump of saturation, kind of bring out some of those colors. And then tint, we're gonna add just a little bit of pink. And I like how that looks there, that looks good. And let's do one more. Let's add a little bit of magic light. So if you watch here, when I drag the intensity over, if you look at the lights in this photo, you're gonna see it kind of enhance those lights. It's gonna bring out that starburst pattern on them. So I don't wanna go too drastic on it, but I'm gonna go up here to about 40. Kinda of like how that looks, how it brings out those lights. All right, I'm good with that. So I'm gonna right click on here and I'm gonna go to export. And I'm gonna to browse to my folder I'm currently in and I'm gonna create a folder called export. And we're gonna select that folder and I'm gonna name this photo Paris 
final HDR. Usually these options, you don't usually have to change. Um, if you do want to change the format, there are some options here. You can also change the resolution. Quality, I generally recommend having that at 100. It won't always default to 100, but I recommend doing that because uh, you want to have the best, highest quality possible most of the time. So I'm going to click export and it exported the photo. So we are good there. Let's go back to catalog and let's try out another function. I'm going to click here on add photos. I'm going to add image and let's do some noise removal on a photo that I have here that has quite a bit of noise in it. All right, so here's our sunset noise photo. And if I zoom in a little, you can definitely see the noise here. It's not terrible. Uh, it's definitely a workable photo, but there is definitely noise there. So we're gonna go over here to edit. And the first thing we're gonna click on is noiseless. Now for this image, it does recommend using low. So I'm gonna click low here. And right away, that makes a big difference. If I hold on the eyeball, that's before, that's after. So it's very noticeable. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit further. Go to 200%. So that's before and after. I think I still want a little bit more of the noise taken away. So I'm gonna go here and click on middle. When I do middle, it definitely makes an even bigger difference. That's before, that's after. So I'm gonna keep it at middle. I really like how that looks. And I'm pretty happy with that photo right there. I don't think we really need to make any more changes to this particular one. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do export. And we're gonna take away the word noise and we're gonna make it sunset now. This time I'm gonna add a photo that I took in Hawaii. And what I wanna do with this photo is I wanna do a couple different edits. So the background on this, I was doing a beach hike with my wife, kind of along the coastline. There's not really an official trail here, which I love. I love exploring off trail places. State of Hawaii is in the process of building a trail along here. Uh, it's gonna be a coastal trail that goes along quite a bit of the Big Island. So when we did this hike, we were hiking about five to six miles each way. And I didn't wanna lug along a lot of heavy gear. So I didn't have my professional camera with me, but I did have my GoPro with me. And I took this on the GoPro. This was back with the GoPro Hero 5 or 6. So the quality, it's not really high quality. It's about 4,000 by 3,000 pixels which isn't bad, but it is a JPEG. So what I wanna do here is I want to upscale this photo. So what I first wanna do though, is I wanna do some edits on it before I upscale it, and then we'll upscale it, which is gonna be done from this screen by dragging it over here and dropping it. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some edits. So first of all, I want to do a little bit of a crop on here, and I wanna do the composition AI. So we're gonna click that kind of brings everything in a little bit tighter, which I like. We're gonna click apply there, but it keeps these cool mountains over here to the side in there. You know, it's got the ocean, the foreground and the sky. So I like what it left behind. Now noise is definitely an issue in this photo. So we're gonna do noiseless next. And Luminar does recommend using middle, which I would agree. We're gonna click middle. And yeah, that's, that's a huge difference. Now this particular photo I think could benefit from a little bit of sharpening as well. So I'm gonna go to super sharp and I'm gonna click low. It's gonna do its magic here. It added a little bit of sharpness to it and I like that right there. Next, I'm gonna go to develop and I'm gonna add just a little touch of saturation. And then it's kind of a little bit yellow to me and you can actually set the white balance if you click on white balance here. So what I wanna do with white balance is I wanna find something in here that's white that I can select. Now this flower over here looks pretty white. Let me get a little bit closer. So I'm actually gonna use my white balance selector and I'm gonna select that right there. That looks better. That's uh, the blues and the yellows look more balanced. That looks more true to what it should look like. I'm gonna add just a little bit of that pink tint there because it was sunset and bump up the saturation a little bit to my liking there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the catalog page and I'm gonna drag this over to upscale now and I'm gonna drop it on there. So let's say I wanted to print this out like for a poster to hang on a wall or a canvas. Upscale is gonna let you do that. I'm gonna do 4X and I'm gonna click upscale. 
Now what I found is if I do 6x, depending on the resolution, sometimes it will make too big of a photo where it's really not gonna give you benefits by having it that big. So unless you have an extreme use case where you're like you want to print it to take up an entire wall or something like that, generally that two times or four times is gonna do the trick. So let's take a look at this here. So this is the photo at 16% right now. And it looks really good. Before, if we were to look at it at 16%, it would not have looked that good. So I'm happy with how that looks. I'm gonna go here to export. And the resolution now is 13,596 by 10,196. That is a lot of pixels in there. I'm gonna click export. And the photo's going to export. All right, let's get into our next demo here. Let's do this one next. We're gonna do focus stacking. So if you don't know much about focus stacking, first of all, let me add these photos. Basically, focus stacking is when you take a bunch of different photos of the same object, but you have a different focus at a different place in the photo. So as you can see here, the focus is kind of in this area and a little bit over here. And this one, the focus is a little bit different. Here, it's more in this area. This photo, it's down a little bit lower. You get the point. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back to the catalog and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna select these photos right here. And by the way, when I'm doing some of these commands, if you're on a Mac, they might be a little bit different. I've used this on my Mac before too. It works great on there. It works on Mac or PC. So after I've selected these seven images, I'm gonna drag them over here to focus stacking. And then I'm gonna click stack. It's gonna take a little bit to do its magic here. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna take these seven photos and it's gonna make one final image. All of that plant right there should be in focus. All right. And that is our final image. That looks really good. I'm uh, really happy with how that looks. I'm gonna right click here and go to export. All right, let's add another image here. I'm gonna add this picture of the cat. I wanna show you that magic light AI feature just a little bit more close up. So I'm gonna click here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag up intensity. And as you can see, it kind of adds a twinkle to all these lights, which there versus that, I just think that adds a lot to the photo. So you can pick your, your degree of intensity. You can change the size. So you can have the glow come further out. You can make it smaller. You can change the beam width. You can make it narrower, thicker. You can also add the glow. So you can do a lot of customizing there. So I'm gonna customize it. I kind of like that right there. And so we're gonna export that. And that is what the magic light looks like. Next image I wanna take a look at is I want to look at dust removal. It's a photo I recently took, and if you look closely, you can see some bugs and or dust that the sun was shining through at the time. It was such a high res photo that the camera picked that up. And it's not necessarily bad, but at the same time, I prefer not to have it there. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over to the tools and I'm gonna click erase. And on erase, I'm gonna click remove dust spots. And we're gonna see it may not detect those as dust spots. It did not, it, it looks like it removed some of them, but there are some still there. No worries though. What we can do is we can erase those. So I'm gonna make the size of the eraser a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna start selecting the spots that I want to remove. And I'm not worried about getting all of them. I just wanna get the most prominent ones. So I'm gonna click on all of those. And then we're gonna click erase. Check this out. Look at that. Not only did it erase them, but it filled in those spots to match and you would not know they were ever there. That looks really good. See another down here I missed. Click erase again, it's gone. Really like how that photo looks, looks really good. And I'm gonna export it as it is right there. And by the way, under the erase option, if you have a photo with power lines in it, there's also remove power lines. And I've tested this out before, it works phenomenally well. You click it, 
it finds them, it removes them. It works great. But I just wanted to note that in case you ever have a photo with power lines as that is a common scenario. All right, so that is a run through of Luminar Neo. And as you can see, there are a lot of features on the side there that I didn't even dive into. I've basically just scratched the surface of what this program can do. It's really quite incredible how much this one piece of software can do and how easy it makes it to do it. So I definitely encourage you to check out Luminar Neo. You can get a free trial by using my link below. And if you do decide to purchase Luminar, check out my coupon code in the description for an additional discount off the price. Until we talk again, happy photo editing. Oh, 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 oh